Did you know reinforced concrete beam can behave like a truss? That is kind of confusing. How is that even possible? Let's consider a simply supported truss with a load applied vertically downward at the center. Because of the load, the bottom horizontal member and vertical members colored in blue will be in tension and the top card and the diagonal members colored in orange will be in compression. Now take a simply supported reinforced concrete beam and apply a load P as we did for the truss. This beam is subjected to bending and shear. Because of bending, the bottom portion of the beam is in tension, so it cracks. And the top portion of the beam is under compression. Somewhere in between these two tension and compression extremes, there is a region where neither tension or compression occurs. We call it neutral axis. Since the bottom of the beam is in tension and cracks, we provide tension flexural reinforcement. To prevent the reinforcement from slipping, it is anchored at the end using heads. Again, we know that due to shear and hence diagonal tension, the weight portion of the beam tends to crack diagonally. To arrest such cracks, we provide vertical reinforcement called stirrups. The diagonal cracks are indicating that there must be a tensile stress perpendicular to the cracks. And as a result, to be at static equilibrium, there will be a compressive stress perpendicular to the tensile stress that is parallel to the cracks. This happens throughout the beam. So to maintain equilibrium, a region of concrete along the diagonal between the stirrups will be under compression and makes a complete truss. Finally, we got an analogous truss mechanism in the beam. There are certain conditions to satisfy to fully realize such truss mechanism in reinforced concrete beam. Such requirements are covered in Chapter 23, Stored in Time Models of ACI 318 Building Code.